in my very first take. Usually it takes me a couple times before it, it works out, but I'm going to try to get this in my first take. Um, so this week you're reading about analysis of variants. Um, we're doing uh, the first chapter here for that is a one-way analysis of variants. So we're going to focus on that. Now you can think of the one-way analysis of variants as like an extension of the independent samples t-test. So in the independent samples t-test you were comparing group A to group B, but in this one-way analysis of variants you can compare more groups. So we are just going to add a, a third group. Um, so I have come up with, I just wanted to come up with some sort of um, you know, fun example of, of comparison. Um, so I'm just going to go with pizza places. Okay, so you are going to have your write up as well as this Excel file, just like you have been. Um, I am going to put the example files up for you as well. But first, let's talk about these. Um, these are already finished. This is a check for outliers. These are the distributions of each of these um, columns. So I'm going to pull up the write up as well. So our scenario is we have 60 people, 20 in each group, to rate the nom nom factor of these three pizza places. Okay. So each person is assigned to one group who has to rate the nom nom factor. Now we're going to say nom nom factor is just like how tasty is it. Um, so zero is not at all nom nommy and 100 is the absolute nom nommiest. Okay. So our question is, is there a difference between the, the nom nom factor of these three pizza places? The hypothesis for our null is there's no difference. The research hypothesis, I'm going to say there, I'm going to guess there is a difference, but I'm not sure what the difference is. So I can't make any kind of claims on, on that. Just that there is a difference. Um, as far as, and that's going to be normal for um, analysis of variance. Um, since you're comparing multiple groups, because you can compare more than three. Um, it just can get, it can get quite um, complicated. So now we talk about our assumptions. These are going to be very, very similar. And I think the same exact assumptions of the independent samples key test. Um, you have, are the data continuous? We can see they are, right? Zero to 100. Um, now, are, there, are the observations independent? And I told you they are, each of these, this one person. Okay, so this is one person, this is a different person, this is a different person. So there are 60 people, each assigned to a different group here. So you have three groups, where you have 20 in each group. Um, now the dependent variable should not contain any outliers. We've already done this, check for outliers. Okay, so you're going to have to do a box plot. Um, and as far as the dependent variable should also be approximately normally distributed. So the first step in that is to um, create these distributions, or these histograms, to show that. Now, as I showed you in a previous video, these aren't to be fully trusted um, just because you can manipulate how it looks a little bit. So I wouldn't put too much stock in this since your sample is kind of small, but um, it's just something that you need to know how to do, you need to understand, okay? Now, the, the final assumption that we have to look at, we're also going to run um, skew and kurtosis for, for the normality, but um, I want to just go over this last one. This final assumption is, are the variances between groups approximately the same? 
steps that I give you, and I'm going to show you how to do them. So after I've run the, um, after I've created the plot for the outliers and the distributions, I need to do the descriptive statistics. So I'm going to Absolute value, the pizza hut, 
column minus and the Pizza Hut mean over here is uh, P3, which is the cell. So dollar sign P, dollar sign 3. And then you can drag that. And then finally, R3 is where you'll get the mean for mozzies. So this is absolute value. We did the mozzies first observation and then dollar sign. Same as R. Dollar sign R. Dollar sign 3. So that's going to, that's the mean of that, right? So these are the numbers that you're trying to get over here, right? So R3, that's what the mean is. Hold this down. Okay, so we've got our residuals. These are our absolute residuals. So the next step is to the the ab absolute residuals need to be um, tested in an ANOVA. If there is a significant finding for the p-value, then you'll say there are differences in the variances between groups, okay? So I know that might be confusing, but let me just run it real quick and show you what I mean. So if I'm going to data analysis, I want to find a NOVA single factor. We have one variable, okay? Just one variable. So we go single factor, click OK, and then we don't want that group. We want D to F. So when you click that, it should pull up or put a box around all of the residuals. And then your output range, you want that to be P18. I don't care where you put it, but it makes the most sense to be um, organized like this. And then you click OK. All right. So this can, you can rename this Levine's test for homogeneity of variance. And here's what we see. So like this was what the value of f needed to be in order to find significance but our f is actually this so it's not statistically significant that means there's no statistically significant difference between these variances so that means that you did not violate that assumption because it, there wasn't there wasn't enough evidence to say there was a difference between these variances. Therefore, we haven't violated that assumption. And we put that in the write up too. I'll go over this a little bit more um, in a minute. So we can move on. Since we, we don't have a violation here, we, we move on. Now we need to run the ANOVA. is our one-way ANOVA. 
value you see is 0.95. So we can go and if our font okay. So I wanted to clear that up real quick so I can show you guys how everything is put in there. So this is a one way ANOVA was conducted to test the hypothesis. That this is an example that I will also upload for you guys to look at. Um, so, this hypothesis was two tailed. The outcome variable was continuous, there was no violation for, for continuous variables. Each observation was independent um, because each person only gave one, um, one rating. There weren't any outliers, so there wasn't a, a violation of that assumption. Distributions as well as human kurtosis indicated no violation of normality. Um, homogeneity of variance was tested with a means test indicating no violation of this assumption. Now when we write that, we write it just like we would a, a typical ANOVA, um, typical F test, but um, we just need to make sure we know the difference between those two. So the Levine's test is testing the homogeneity of variance, so how um, if the variances differ between groups, and the p-value for that was 0.63, the f was 0.46, so 0.46, p equals 0.63, <coughs> and the findings for the ANOVA were not statistically significant because we have um, an F of 0.05, because I'm going to round that, 0.05, and a p-value of 0.95, because I also rounded that. Um, so that did not reach the alpha of 0.05, and therefore we failed to reject the null hypothesis that there were no differences in the null numbering between these three pizza places. And once you finish this file, and get the items requested here. And you don't have to do um, changed changes, or you don't have to do um, two decimal places on this file, but you do on this file, okay? So the write-up, because typically that's where you have to do your rounding anyway. So I'm not too worried about this anymore. It's been a little confusing, so Let's just put it in the write-up, and as long as you've gotten this all written up to two decimal places, and I'll see here, I did this due to three because it would have been zero, zero, but it should not, we should not put that, so I did it to three there, but um, for the most part, it's the two decimal places. Um, if there's a chance that this number could be a one, then you need to have a zero there, but for like a p value, you can put just 0.95 or 0 0.05 or, or um, whatever the case may be there, because a p value will, you'll never see 1.00. Um, so point something is fine, you don't have to have a zero before the decimal there. Um, but in, for the f and the t and such, you should, since, since you can have um, something 